Hi everyone, Darwin here. Welcome back to the Toady Wee Workshop. Now I realize this is going to be a bit of a niche video because not everyone has a CNC, but I'm going to do a small upgrade today that I've wanted to do since I put this machine together about two years ago. This machine is a Lowrider 2 designed by Ryan over at V1 Engineering. Now pretty well all CNC's have some basics in common. They move in the X direction, so east and west, and they move in the Y direction, which would be north and south. And most actual operations of the CNC move in both directions at once. But CNC's also move in Z, or up and down. The setting your starting point in X and Y is pretty straightforward. You move your CNC over top of your starting point on the workpiece and you tell the machine this is the origin. But setting the zero, the starting point, on the Z dimension is a little bit trickier. My starting point is always the top of the workpiece. But finding the top of the workpiece has been tricky. I've used what's called the paper trick, where you lower your drill until the paper stops wiggling. Then you know you're a paper's width above the top of your workpiece. But I want the machine to do some of that work for me. To do that, we create a switch using something called a touch plate and wire it up to the control board. If you have a better way to cut a piece of metal, I would highly recommend doing that. Uh, this didn't work very well. So I have two sets of wires here. One is a red and black pair with alligator clips on either end. The other is a white and black pair with a jack on the end of it that fits into an end stop port in the control board. That port can send current through the wires and detect if there's a continuous circuit. So one of the alligator clips is going to be connected to my touch plate. The other one is going to, if I can find it, yeah, have a magnet attached to it that's going to be able to attach to a bit that's in the router. There are different types of control boards. I have a Rambo 1.4, but what you're looking for are the end stop ports. There's a pair for X, a pair for Y, and a pair for Z. We're going to be using Z min because in my G code the carves are always done in negative space, so we want to set the top of the workpiece to zero. Uh, and by the way, make sure your power is disconnected when you're working inside one of these. So keeping an eye on our touch plate and magnet, I'm going to pull up the control software. So as you can see, the touch plate and the magnet are not touching each other, so the circuit is broken. So we can run a G-code command called M119, and that tells us if the end stop switches are triggered or not. The X and Y mins are triggered by default, so I can ignore them. It's the Z min that I'm interested in, and it is open because the plate and the magnet are not connected. So if we connect them and then run M119 again, it should show our Z min as triggered, and it does. So we know our board can physically detect the circuit. Now we have to tell it what to do. First, let's get the thickness of our touch plate. And we want to put a set of commands now into a macro button so we can do something called a Z probe. A Z probe will move the CNC router down until the Z min circuit is triggered. This control board uses Marlin firmware. Marlin's often used for 3D printers, but it can be used for the CNC as well. And there are different types of firmware out there that you can use. So the commands might be slightly different. There are three steps to this macro. The G28 command tells the control board to move the router in the negative direction until the min circuit is triggered. Adding a Z to the end of the line tells it to do this in the Z dimension. But there's a touch plate between the top surface and the material and the tip of the bit. So we have to take that into account. That's what the second line does here. So I'm going to put the actual value of my touch plate in the G92 command here, and that'll tell the controller that I am above the surface of the material by the thickness of my touch plate. This last G0 command is a movement command, and it just tells the machine to move up to a safe distance. Okay, now for some real world testing. Attach the magnet to the bit and we put the touch plate underneath it just to see if the connection works through the bit. Running our M119 command shows that, yep, we've got the circuit triggered. So now we have to run an actual probe test. I'm gonna click the Z probe macro. It should cycle through those three commands that we talked about earlier. The probe moves down rapidly until the circuit's triggered, reverses, 
and then moves down slowly again until the circuit is triggered again, and that's our new zero. So it looks like everything works. So now what I want to do is go in and set up a permanent circuit. I want to use these quick release connectors so that the probe is not dangling down when the machine is running. So I first need to drill a couple of holes in the box for the connectors to sit in. These are gonna get used pretty frequently, so I'm gonna use some epoxy to make sure they don't come loose. Gonna change the shape of the touch plate a little bit. And we'll do a fit check. Looks good. Okay, because I've redone the wiring, I'm just gonna rerun our circuit tests and make sure everything's still good. Yep, looks fine. And now, final test with our whole setup. But wait, what if you need to carve your baked potato? What are you going to do? But don't forget about the hamburger or patty of your choice. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? We're mostly woodworkers around here. But seriously, in the end, I've gone with a more solid touch plate. This is just the head of a bolt that I've cut off and soldered a lead to. Works great. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And here are some bloopers. Thank you.